Welcome back to the channel and in today's two-part tutorial series I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make this awesome looking motion graphic in Blender step by step. So this is going to be part one. We're going to be showing you guys how to set up the scene with the modeling and then we're going to do some animation and we'll also be doing just a little bit of physics but it's really really beginner friendly really simple. And then in part two we're going to make some fantastic procedural shaders. We're also going to be using some textures that we're going to find online and then doing some awesome looking lighting using a little bit of HDRI as well and then rendering this out as a final animation. As always, my final result will be on Patreon and the link to that will all be in the description below. So let's jump into this two-part motion graphics tutorial and I hope you guys enjoy. So for a brand new scene in Blender, we're gonna go ahead and select all the default objects. We're gonna press delete and then we're gonna go shift A. We're gonna to go to our mesh options. We're gonna add in a cylinder. And with the cylinder here, we're gonna tab into edit mode and with everything active, we're gonna go S, 0.5 and press enter. And then we're gonna go R, X, 90 and press enter. So now we have it rotated at 90 degrees on the X. And then we're gonna go S, Y, 5. So S, Y and 5 and press enter. So now it's five times as long on the Y. And what I'm thinking here is maybe we'll actually rotate it on the Z. So we're gonna go R, Z, 90 and press enter. So it's going this way. So we go into our front orthographic view. This is where we're gonna see. Okay, we're now gonna tab back out. Let's go ahead and give this a bevel modifier. Let's come here to the amount, bring it way down and then bump up the segments to three. Let's right click and go shade smooth. And let's also give it a subdivision surface modifier. Okay, so now we have this guy. Let's now also go shift A and let's go add in another cylinder. Let's go with uh, just 12 in this case. And let's go tab into edit mode. And we're gonna go S.01 and press enter. So S.01, so it's really tiny. Now we're gonna go S, Z, and we're gonna scale it up, and let's press N, and let's go to our item, and um, let's just actually tab out, and let's go with our item here under transform. Let's look at the height, okay? And let's take the Z value over here, and let's make it eight meters by tapping in eight. And then we're gonna tab into edit mode, and we're gonna go G, and just move it over here, and place it right over here, like that, in the front. And then we're gonna go G, X. Let's just move it in a little bit on the X. And then we're gonna go Shift D to duplicate and X. So they're almost even like that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the group of verts down here at the bottom. We're gonna press F3 and we're gonna type in hook. And we're gonna go to new object. And then we're gonna grab these groups of verts over here. We're gonna go F3 and we're gonna type in hook again and go hook to new object. And now both of these are hooked. We're gonna tab back out. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna select both of these empties by holding in shift. And if you now go G to move them, you can see those are following along, but we're gonna hold in shift still and select the cylinder and then go control P and we're gonna go object keep transform. So now if we grab the cylinder and we double tap R to rotate it, you can see that this uh, string is following along or this rope that holds it. So now we're gonna do some simple animations. Let's come here to our keyframes. Let's make it uh, 70 keyframes. And uh, let's come over here and zoom in a little bit. And we're gonna come to frame one. And on frame one, we're gonna go to our top orthographic view. And we're gonna go R negative 12. So R negative 12. We're gonna go I and insert a rotation. And then we're gonna come over to frame 70. And then we're gonna go R. And we're still in our top orthographic view. We're gonna go R 24 and hit enter. And then we're gonna go I and insert a rotation. So now we have this, okay? So what I figured out here actually now is that I've probably placed this one, uh, this one should actually be in the middle. That's not a problem. So let's just grab the keyframe on frame 70 and go G and just drag it in the middle to 35. All we have to do now is just simply grab the first keyframe and then go Shift D and drag that to frame 70. So now we have a loop that goes like this. Okay, perfect. So now from the front, just to give it a little bit more realism, from the front, we're gonna to go to frame one. We're gonna enable auto king over here. And from the front, we're just gonna go R and just rotate it very slightly. In fact, let's just come here to the Y and let's just make it minus three, like so. Just a very slight rotation. And then let's just grab this keyframe and go shift D to duplicate and drag it to 70. So now those two will loop. And then we just have to come to the middle here and let's just go and tip that to free. 
We still have auto keying enabled, so now it has a little bit of a slant there as well. Let's turn off auto keying, and let's go to frame one and let's test it. So now we have this. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go shift A, make sure auto keying is turned off. We're gonna go shift A and add in an empty. Let's make it a cube and let's go G, Z. Let's move it to the top here, just to where our, um, these guys start here at the top. So the cube is in the middle of there. Then you can see we have the origin point in the middle of the empty here, and that's where we're gonna be rotating. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna grab our cylinder here and holding in shift, we're gonna select the empty. And we're gonna go control P and we're gonna go object, keep transform. So now if we rotate this, we have you can see that follows along. So all we have to do now is with our empty selected, we need to go into our right orthographic view and let's go now to our item under our rotation transform here on frame one with this empty. Let's just come here and on the X, let's make it negative 12. And let's come over here and press I and that's gonna insert a keyframe. And we actually wanna grab this keyframe and go shift D and duplicate it and drag it to 70. So it goes back to the same place. And let's come to the middle to 35. And let's come here and make this 24. And let's press I to insert a keyframe. So let's see if that looks correct. Um, in fact, I messed that up because let's just come to 35 and let's just make this uh, positive 12 and let's just press I to insert that keyframe. So it's gonna be negative 12 and it's gonna go to positive 12 and then back to negative 12 on the X rotation. And that's gonna give us this effect over here. So now we have no physics at all. We've kind of created this cool looking swing. Now from here, I think this is pretty much the hard part. From here, it gets a lot easier. So let's go to frame one. Shift A, let's add in a cylinder. We wanna make sure it's only 12 verts, which it is at the moment. Then we're gonna tab into edit mode and we're gonna go S, with everything active, we're gonna go S, Shift and Z. So F, Shift and S, Shift and Z. And let's um, scale it about this much. Just so we have these little rods. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go G, X and move it over to the side to about here. And then I'm gonna go, maybe grab the whole thing, go S, Z and just flatten it a little bit and then go G, Z and move it down to about here. And then I'm gonna go Control R and roll in some segments like this. And then what I wanna do is make sure I grab the top here and go Control B and just give it a bevel. Roll the middle mouse button to add in segments. And with the bottom here, we can just kind of delete that face. We're also gonna go ahead and in our front view, we're gonna press A to select all of this. We can go Shift D and then X, move it over a little bit and then go Shift R and just repeat that action till it goes all the way to the other side like this. Now we have these guys over here. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna go over to our object data properties. We're gonna go um, create a vertex group. And then we're gonna go over to our weight paint. And with this vertex group, let's just take our strength, bring it down to 0.3. Let's increase the radius. And let's just come over here and let's just paint and just progressively, and this makes the radius a bit bigger. Let's just progressively make it more um, warmer in value. So I'm just doing a few passes like this till we see it red at the bottom. So it's we know it's fully being um, weighted so something like this we have red and then slowly it goes out to the lighter values that's essentially going to be our influence so where it's warmer we have more influence and then we're going to go control one on the number pad and let's just quickly do the back so we're now in the back orthographic view so we've just essentially did that in first or front orthographic and now we're doing it from the back orthographic just doing a few passes till we have it painted like so so now we have that nice gradient and let's go back to our object mode and now we're gonna right click and go shade smooth. And let's go over to our physics. Let's give this cloth. And then we're gonna go down and enable pressure and let's make that 120 on the pressure. We're also gonna go down to collisions, enable self collision. And then we also need to go up to the shape. Let's go to the pin groups and make it group. And let's select our cylinder and let's give that a collision under the physics. And then from frame one, let's hit the space bar and look what we have here. How cool is that? And if you want that to happen faster, you can actually just come and take your pressure and take it up to a much higher value. Okay, so I'm gonna go from frame one again, try run that, and now to bounce back a lot quicker. 
Um, I might just take it back to 150. And then in edit mode, I'm just gonna take all of this and go G, Z, and just bring it down a little bit. And maybe squish it a little bit like so. Okay, now let's go back to frame one and now let's see what it looks like. Okay, so this is kind of like one of those things where you have to kind of just mess around with it a bit until you are happy with the results that you're getting. One thing you can also do is grab the empty and you can go over to your, whoops, let's go over to the graph editor. And then you can come over here to your animation curve for the X rotation. And you can grab it and you can try and mess around with it a little bit. So you can grab this handle and scale it and then see how the timing changes a little bit. So it goes faster towards the middle, slows down towards the ends. like that. So I'm going to go back to my timeline. Make sure to save as you go. I'm going to save this to my desktop. And now we're going to go shift A, we're going to add in a cube. We're going to go G, Z, move it down like so. We're going to tab into edit mode and go S, X and scale it along the X like so. Then we're going to go to our face select, select the top face and we're going to go I. And we're going to inset it a little bit and then we're going to go S, X, and then we're going to go S, Y, and scale that along the Y, like so. And then we're going to go E to extrude and Z and extrude it down on the Z, like so. And you can kind of, you know, scale it out a little bit on the size if you want. We're just kind of creating this area where it sits in. And then what we're going to do is we're going to grab this bottom face. We're going to go Shift D and then S to scale it. And then we're going to go G, X, and move it back. And then we're going to go... S, Y, thicken it a little bit. Then we're gonna go E to extrude and Z and extrude it all the way down. And let's grab this face and go G, X and move it back like so. And then we can just grab this whole thing and move it up till it's sitting over here like that. Now we're gonna tab back out. We're gonna to go to our physics. And let's go and add, give this a bevel modifier. And let's bring the amount down and bump up the segments till we have something that looks like this. Okay, that's looking pretty cool. Then we are gonna go Shift A, we're gonna add in a plane. G, Z, bring it down to about here. Then we're gonna go S, so we're gonna scale it way up like this. Then we're gonna go Control A and apply that scale. And then we're gonna tab to edit mode and we're just gonna select these two faces over here and go E to extrude and Z and extrude them nice and high. And then we're gonna go Control plus just so we have these two selected and we're gonna go P and separate selection. Tab back out, and now this is its own separate object. All we have to do is tab into edit mode and select this edge, and then go Control B or Command B and create a bevel, and just roll the middle mouse button a couple of times to add in some segments, and then tab back out, right click, and go Shade Smooth. So now we have that nice backdrop. It's at this point where I'm gonna go ahead now and find a position that I like, and I'm gonna go Shift A and add in a camera. And I'm gonna go G and just move my camera back, and then go zero to go into the camera view. And with the camera active, just press G and move it around and zoom in and out till you get a position that you like. So I'm gonna go with something like that. And another thing we're gonna do is just quickly, this is optional, but just grab this edge in here for this backdrop and go Shift D to duplicate that edge, right click. And let's go P and separate that selection. Now we just have this random edge over here that we've selected. And we're gonna go F3 and go convert. We're gonna convert it to a curve then we're gonna to go to our curve settings and let's go under to the geometry. And let's go to the depth and increase that. So now we have this thing running along here, just this little bead, which looks kind of nice. We're gonna right click and go shade smooth. And that's just gonna add a nice kind of profile there, like so. Just a little extra detail. And then we're gonna now select our cloth and we're just gonna go over to our physics. We're gonna go down to our cache and let's make that 70 frames. Let's go ahead and bake, and now it's gonna bake in our cloth physics to our animation. And now we have a looping little animation in Blender. So what we're gonna be doing in part two is setting up our materials and our lighting so we can have a awesome, fantastic looking render. As always, I will be uploading my original to Patreon. You guys can check the links to that in the description below. And just one more thing, let's just maybe grab this physics uh, object here and let's just give that a subdivision surface. Just to smooth it out a bit. Okay, 
I'll see you guys in part two.